Hi again. Welcome to Pearl Magazine. Chinese New Year is approaching fast, and so is the annual tradition of cleaning up our homes. In Hong Kong's notoriously tiny flats, the need to declutter and stay organized can be critical for peace of mind. But for those of us who may be organizationally challenged, it's easier said than done. Luckily, help is close at hand. April Joe met up with the professionals to brush up on the annual New Year cleanup. My name is Hayden Mack. I'm 10 years old. Currently, my favorite toys are toy blocks and toy guns. Here are all my toy guns. I remember this was a gift from my daddy. Hayden's parents buy him toys every one to two months. Hayden is asked to contribute to the cost of his toys. He got ten dollars pocket money every week, and then we have some uh, a mini reward program. So he will help uh, on doing some small tasks like doing some housework, and then practicing piano, and then doing some extra uh, supplementary exercise. And then for that extra pocket money, he can keep it by himself, and then to spend those money for what he liked to buy with. Last Christmas, Hayden got this. He had been dreaming about getting it for a long time. I like this toy very much because it is special. There's a bed inside, an oven, a snake. And this is a desk and a chair. Outside there is a tree, a fox, a pig and a man. This door is special. You can open and close it. He writes a letter to Santa every year, telling Santa what does he want for the Christmas present. And actually, we are the Santa's to do some arrangement behind the scene. When he was small, he liked the Thomas train a lot. And then we bought a lot of uh, related product and then tons of the uh, train for him and then uh, after that, when he grew up, and also infected by some of the cartoons, the characters, and then he appetize, and then those choice of the toys keep changing as well. Then we kind of keep buying different kind of the toys for him. But with limited space at home, keeping new toys also means decluttering regularly. Anna and her husband encourage Hayden to actively participate in the decision making when it comes to getting rid of old toys. We do some cleanup uh, about every two, three months, or at least half a year. So I want to uh, free up more space at home, and then also we try to keep our home net and tidy. We will reveal all the stuff together and then uh, take a look at them piece by piece and then to decide which one to keep and which one to give it up. Luckily, Anna and Hayden seldom have disagreements. It doesn't take long for them to make the final decision. I don't need these toys anymore. Some are from my friends, like Toy Shark, Beyblades, Toy Crocodile, Flying Chess, Football, and a board game. If I clear them out, I can free up space for my future new toys and donate those old ones to others. While some prefer to declutter themselves, other people, like this woman who goes by her nickname Cece, prefers to seek help from a professional. Cece wants to organize her clothes as well as declutter her small room. I have too many things which are stuffed into that room, like uh, my, uh, all my clothes, uh, some of the boxes of uh, gifts from friends, and uh, some old clothes and uh, also my husband has moved in since uh, we got married last year so that's why uh, you know guys they are very freestyle and so all of his stuffs are stored in that room so it's kind of like really uh, cramped up right now. She asks her friend Orange Tam for help. Tam is a home organizer. 
，早晨啊！啊，救命啊！唔係嗱，呢度裏面就有舊嘅冬天衫嚟嘅呢啲，即係其實你而家喺度抄衫著嘅，呢、這個都係衣櫃，呢、這個哦呢啲你啲衫嚟嘅，係啊，唔知想點，好多人都唔著噶啦。Tam decides to start with a wardrobe. It's the changeover of seasons, but she can't find her winter clothes. That's what's troubling her the most right now. Tam says her goal today is to organize all of Cece's clothes in her wardrobe so they're easy to find. First of all, we take out all the clothes and put them together. Next, we will check them piece by piece and ask ourselves, Will you wear it in the future? Does it still fit you? Or what's the current condition of the clothing? I'm my client's facilitator and also an advisor because I'm not just cleaning the house for them as a cleaner. It's the owner who must decide what to keep or throw away. I can only offer her advice or objectively describe to her her clothes condition. If there are clothes that the owner cannot decide on or the item is of sentimental value, we would suggest if there are other ways to memorize it, like keeping a photo of it while wearing it. But if there is enough space, she can keep it as well. Some people have difficulty to let go their valuables because they have so much sentimental values in it. And they, they don't want to let go. It's not really the physical object itself but also like the emotional representation of it. Another possibility is some people think there must be some value in it. So that's one day I would use it. Maybe not now, but maybe one day. So I want to be best prepared. I want to have everything there. It's a kind of sense of control there, that I have things ready and handy and I know where it is. Identifying which clothes to get rid of is just the first step. Tam is now teaching CC to fold the remaining clothes in a way that's neat and easy to find. I suggest if she buys one new piece in the future, she needs to give up one old piece. It complies to the principle one in, one out. Secondly, do not buy fast fashion clothes anymore. I hope she will learn to manage her own things. Only then she can live an organized life and manage her life well. I find it quite useful and it's kind of inspired me to think about, uh, well, um, actually, we don't really need a lot of things in life. Uh, we only need some essentials. Local psychologist Beatrice Ng says minimizing belongings should start with the immediate surroundings. She started with her own desk. Basically, I would put away my computer and those papers. So only is the little plant there and then a little pen right there and then some name card. It helped to have a clarity of my mind too when I work. I want to be really focused and I would just eliminate another distraction that would help me to focus a bit better. Many studies show a strong link between clutter, depression and stress. Beatrice says there is a direct correlation as well. Logically, you can imagine that in a chaotic, messy places, you would feel more anxious because you can't find things quickly. It creates more stress. And there's also research showing like it would challenge the sleep quality. Decluttering, you know, make it tidy and organized is almost like functional, it's a must. As a clinical psychologist, she decorates the meeting room herself. The design is both practical and psychologically soothing. 
tissues is here because I need it handy for people who become emotional. And I need the clock, I need just little bit decoration. When my clients come in, if they come in as a family, I can serve them drinks. And here is plants. So I, I love plants personally. And also like, I think people would feel much better when they're in a confined space, but they also see something green. And I also use planting, gardening a lot as an analogy when I teach mindfulness. Since many people are stuck at home during the pandemic, Orange Tam suggests they get a head start on tidying up this year. If we spend more time, even holiday at home, we can tidy up slowly, step by step. You can review your relationship with your belongings. This takes time. It is a process which allows you to get to know more about yourself and your consuming habits. It can prevent you from impulse buying in the future. Beatrice Ng says that while Chinese New Year is approaching and cleaning up the house is a tradition, it's also the perfect time to change one's habits. In the pandemic time, like um, we we have lots of uncertainty. Given this uncertainty, I think a sense of control would help in, inside the space that we can control. Tidying up is one of it. Organizing your space is one of it. It would be quite useful if we spend a little time to look at the space that we're in and trying to organize it or trying to put it in the way that you wish, it would help us to feel better. After the break, old buildings may offer affordable accommodation, but could you be living in a house of cards? Stay with us. Welcome back. Ten years ago, a deadly building collapse shook the city. A five-story tenement building in Hong Hum caved in, killing four people. The disaster prompted the government to implement a territory-wide mandatory building inspection scheme to avoid similar tragedies. But some property owners have delayed their inspections. And with thousands of old buildings in the city, many fear it's just a matter of time till the next residential catastrophe. <laughs> I'm living one day at a time. No prediction. It collapses when it collapses. These old districts are populated by senior citizens. They are first scared, then worried about prosecution. One renovation stage after another. Basically, it's just never-ending. Where do we find the money? To defuse a time bomb in our society, the public won't have to worry about the risks of collapse. Eighty-three-year-old Ms. Cheng has been living alone in an old building since her husband passed away a few years ago. While her mobility is not limited, Ms. Cheng suffers from a number of illnesses. Angina and cancer, colorectal cancer. I always feel faint. The other day I almost fell in the bathroom because I was suddenly dizzy. Ms. Cheng's been here for over 30 years, and the building has aged along with her. Bits of concrete fall all the time. Bang, and some fell on my bag the other day while I was eating. The meal was ruined. By golly, my arm was injured. It was all swollen and bruised. I was rushed to the emergency room. Look at this. It's all peeling off, and the ceiling is leaking. And the room, look. It's dark and leaking. This plastic seal won't last long. She's forced to sleep in the living room now. When it rains, she must put containers everywhere in the flat to catch the drips. Like this, I'd keep putting them out. Her children asked her to move in with them, but she's been reluctant. What is the point of moving? I won't be able to come back later. How can I fix it when it's flooded? 
When I'm here, I can deal with it and absorb the water with newspapers. There's nothing else I can do. The poor condition exists not just on the inside. The exterior is just as bad. The staircases are falling apart. Everything else as well. It's leaking here. Every step is falling apart. I could fall backwards going up, really. I could miss a step and fall down. Without handrails, Miss Chung must pay special attention when she's on the stairs. She says there's no use worrying about the poor condition of the building. There's nothing I can do, even if I keep worrying about the collapse. I dare not imagine just living one day at a time, not counting them. If it collapses, it collapses. The problem of badly maintained and unrepaired buildings has always been one that's difficult to solve. From time to time, there have been incidents where people are injured from falling concrete debris. The most striking and memorable incident happened in 2010. A 50-year-old tenement building collapsed on Ma Tao Wai Road in Hong Kong. Half of the five-story building crumbled, killing four people. The reason for the collapse was structural damage caused by redecoration work. In as early as 2003 and 2005, the government had conducted a public consultation on badly maintained old buildings. A consensus was reached that it was a problem that needed to be solved. By 2012, the buildings department implemented the mandatory building and window inspection schemes. More than 18,000 buildings fall into the mandatory buildings inspection scheme. This includes buildings over 30 years old and of at least three stories in height. The department issued inspection notices on only about 5,300 of the buildings. The Tupaman area has many tenement buildings, all over 60 years old. They received notices on building and window inspections. Lam has been concerned about old buildings in the area. He says most owners are elderly people in their 70s and 80s and have no idea what to do when they receive such notices. Out of everyone in the building, Lam only knows three owners. Only one of them still lives here. The others are all tenants in subdivided flats and shops. The establishment of an occupant's corporation depends on the number of ownerships or units. In tenement buildings, you must have at least three owners to form an OC. As you can see, she's in her 80s. How is she supposed to do this? She doesn't even know what's an OC or a government order. They can't do this. As of November 2020, the Buildings Department issued over 66,000 building inspection notices. However, some 25,000, or about 40%, did not follow them. Among them, almost half didn't complete the inspection three to six and a half years after their notices. The building Miss Chung's living in had to be renovated a few years ago. Each household must contribute $10,000. Several months ago, she received another inspection notice from the building's department. They want to do repair work now. I said no, just let it collapse. I really have no money. These seniors are retired. The cost to repair a building or flats from our experience could be forty to fifty thousand dollars, some even more. Surveyor Vincent Ho has come to inspect this building today. A large area has peeled off. This is loose as well, but not as puffed up like the other parts. But it could all fall apart in the future. The surface of the staircase is very fragmented and uneven. In an emergency or an escape, you could slip and trip. It's rather dangerous. He also looked inside one of the flats. These steel bars are more complete here, but they're still weak and the concrete is all gone. 
If the beam is obviously worn, the structural risk is relatively high. This beam has no obvious cracks, which suggests that it's safe from steel erosion or concrete peeling off. Vincent Ho says for a 60-year-old building, this is a classic disrepair case. However, the structure is largely intact and is unlikely to collapse anytime soon. Still, the potential risks cannot be overlooked. He says if repair works are not done soon, the safety of the building could be affected. Whether a building is safe for living does not depend solely on its structure, but also fire and structural safety, hygiene of drainage and leakages. A comprehensive assessment is needed. If we are only dealing with the problems we see today, another bigger issue might surface next year. The root cause has not been fixed. Therefore, old buildings require a comprehensive repair, not to make it look nice, but to cure all the issues. For those not carrying out repair work, the building's department may arrange consultants and contractors to inspect and make repairs on behalf of the owners and recover the cost from them later. Vincent Ho suggests an alternative way. We're not asking the building's department to take this on because they only execute policies. They can't fix all the old buildings in Hong Kong. Another platform may be needed to operate in a similar model to help buildings manage these projects and then approach the owners for payment. Those unwilling to pay, an encumbrance could be imposed or risk incurring additional expenses. According to the Buildings Department, up until April 2020, it has arranged 384 repair projects on behalf of property owners. The total cost was around $43.5 million, of which $2.7 million was still in arrears. We can use an alternative to help owners wishing to repair so that they can live in their properties for another decade or two. Not only are we providing support to the owners, but we're also diffusing a time bomb in our society. The public won't have to worry about the risks of collapse. That's our show for this week. Next time, the countdown is on to Chinese New Year and those eagerly anticipated Lyce. But this year, those famous red gift packets will go more digital than ever. Plus, it's all about the arcs as the bovine zodiac sign takes its turn in the spotlight. Thanks for watching. See you next time.